said, welcome to the Horsemen Podcast, an open form conversation about our passions, interesting topics with a free flowing structure. Today we're going to be doing our hot takes on traveling as part of episode six. Episode six of season two. Stay with us. So Josh, how often do you travel? You know, over the past, like, this is kind of a sad thing. I've been Washington State for three years and really haven't traveled anywhere except that road trip I took. Oh, man. Yeah. I've, like, I've been to Mount, like, I've been to, I've been to Mount Rainier. Okay. Um, but that's about it. And the kind of, like, the reason why I was, like, like, I've been just working all the time. But prior to moving to Washington, I traveled around actually quite a lot um, by various type, by various modes of transportation. Favorite way to travel? Um... My favorite one is traveling by car. Car? Yeah. Um, we did um, We did a lot of car stuff. Um, when I was growing up, at least, uh, my family and I were big campers. Okay. So we would hitch the camper to our Suburban and, and take it traveling. I think one of the more memorable car trips I had was about 10 or so years ago, we took a trip up to Maine, mm-hmm. and uh, we hit all the New England states. Oh, um, whoa. We hit, like, we hit Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, New York, um, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Maryland, uh, sorry, Massachusetts, uh, Rhode Island, and Maine, um, and all the other ones in between. What kind of, what was the, f- the funniest part of the trip is the, <laughs> this is like the craziest story. I'm like, this is such a, um, country thing to do because you really don't know. My dad decided it was a great idea to take the Suburban and the camper into the streets of New York City. Oh, man. Like, in, like we're in, we're trying to maneuver through New York City, oh, which shit. is a bourbon and a camper. And one of the greatest things was, for dinner, my dad rolled up to uh, street vendors and rolled down, the, rolled down the window like it was a drive through and we got food for off the street from New York. <laughs> I don't remember what I had. It was like this potato thing. It was like a just Jewish potato thing I had. I don't quite remember what it was. Um, but, yeah, that was like – yeah, my, my favorite was my car. That's like that's a, such a favorite story I love telling people because it's so ridiculous. You just stopped in the middle of New York. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, hey, I know we have a huge camper. We can't park this thing anywhere. By the way, we're going double park here real quick. No, and no, no. Get our we order. didn't park. We just rolled Dude. down the window like a drive through. Through. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, and then when the drug vendors would turn around and they're like, all right, what do you want? And it would give us like, yeah, oh, my God. It was like the craziest thing because I was like, we are in so much trouble. How the hell are we getting a suburban and camper out of city? Well, we got in and we got out. So, <laughs> 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 but no, we, when, we, when I was younger, we always did road trips. Um I think I've probably been to, like, maybe 24 states or something like that. Maybe a little more. That's almost half. Yes, almost half. Um, and uh, 50 states in the United States, if you yeah. don't know. Yeah. I think the one the, – probably the two ones I probably wouldn't drive to – well, actually, the one I, I would never be able to drive to, and I don't think anybody will in the, few time, in the future, is Hawaii. Um, don't think I could take a road trip out there. It'd be it'd be I, a little interesting if I did. I think you could, honestly. Um, like if I got my car up to about four hundred miles an hour, I could probably ride on the ride on the ocean. You could just drive under the ocean. There you go, a tunnel. That's a tunnel. what we should build from San Diego to Honolulu. A tunnel. The Trans Pacific Tunnel. Tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> but I've also taken like I've ta- I've taken planes, I've taken trains, automobiles, um, I think those are like the three main modes, but I've I've taken them before. Um, I think the train ones have more. I think I've 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 been on the Amtrak train I think at least once, and there was a time where I was like, man, I I, I could go to Chicago and back from Seattle. Um, on the it train. would take for it would take a yeah. while. It would be pretty expensive. But um, what was what was like your your favorite mode growing up or your favorite mode of transportation like for traveling now? Um, I do a lot of ski trips, so a lot of it's like car travel. Um, I'm not opposed to riding on the airplane or, or train. Um, I just don't have a lot of experience with either. But a lot of it's like the classic road trip. Mm-hmm. And especially like for me, I'm a huge um, skier slash snowboarder. So it's just like I pack up, you know, my car, you know, with all my skier yeah. gear. And it's just like, all right, let's, you know, travel to this like mountain and sh- shred the gnar. What's the, uh, what's the longest road trip you've ever done? The longest road trip? I remember this was... Um, by my own self, um, my friends and I, we went over to Sandpoint, but with my family, we went all the way down to um, uh, Mount Rushmore from oh, Washington. Wow, that's a lot. Washington, drive. yeah. We went down there, and then we also did 
all the way to LA as well too uh, uh, for one of them. I have a couple big road trip stories, but the Mount Rushmore, I remember that one was a long time. And also being younger as well too, um, I didn't have a smartphone, so I didn't have anything mm-hmm. entertaining. You know, like when you're on that, like if you're going through the Midwest, gosh, it can get boring. Yes. You know, <laughs> because, sorry, people who are listening for the Midwest, um, but it's just like looking out the window and like from being like from Washington, you know, it's just like you have a bunch of different types of hillsides, you know, like bunch of different oh, going like through the pass. pass. Yeah. yeah, if you're going from like Seattle to Yakima. That is a gorgeous drive. Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful drive. Yeah, a bunch of trees, a bunch of different mountainsides. You know, you're going up hills, down hills. Over there, it's almost like super flat, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's not flat, flat, but like... It's, it's pretty flat. It's pretty flat, and it's kind of hard because like for me, like I'm a person that uses like landmarks and out there just like you can't really like landmark anything mm-hmm. you're kind of just staring the off. the third cornfield on your left which one what? <laughs> and it's like oh my god i think um yes. i think the longest road trip i ever did um this is actually this is a really cool experience so okay this is back in 2016 and um at the time that this happened i just completed my senior year of high school okay and during my years in high school, I had the um, I was a part of a private school's uh, robotics team, and we went to we went to all sorts of events and stuff like that. I mean, we've driven to St. Louis. We've um, I think we drove to St. Louis. I think we went up to West Virginia University one time for one. But I think the coolest, the longest trip we ever did was um, we after my senior year of high school we did really really well that year really well in the finals and i think we were the 64th best team in the world or something like that whoa and um yeah it really insane like the division we were in like these are the top like these were the top 75 robots in the world in this division and we placed 64th out of that division no, we no, were no. 16th to, uh, 16th for one day and then we lost like four matches in a row, got bumped down to seventy five, and then we the one of our last few matches got ranked back up. Um, so we got invited to this super exclusive, like su- well, not su- this super inclu- like exclusive uh, invitational in Indianapolis. So at the time, I had my permit. My dad was like, "Hey, you want to drive us to Indianapolis?" And I was like, "You want me to drive this suburban with all stuff carrying the trailer that has the." robot in all 300 pounds of gear and he goes yeah and i was like i was like you know what i'm not ne- i'm probably not gonna get this opportunity again i was like yeah yeah, yeah i'll go for it so i have my permit i don't even have my license like <laughs> and this is like the first time i'm driving He's breaking the law yeah right <laughs> well i had my pa- i had my dad with me you know we had been dad and, and all the ki- and all family <laughs> and um so we we uh, we drove up to Indianapolis, and uh, I don't I don't I don't remember exactly how long the drive was, but I knew I couldn't finish the last two hours because my arms started getting tired. Because at the time I was still you know learning you know the the the, the ten and two right. Now mine's at the six. Oh, I keep mine God. at six, and I just kind of do that you know that's because it's easy. My hand my hands resting on my lap, um, but yeah I, I had my hands at the ten and two, so my hands are like this for however long we were on the road. And that gets a little tiring after a while. Yeah. But I think the scariest part was when I went between two trailer tractors, um, two semi trucks. Oh yeah, dude. And it's I drove between there, and my dad's like, Are "You okay?" And I'm like, "I'm getting so much anxiety. I need to slow down." He goes, "No, just speed up, go past them." You gotta go past them. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a long road trip I did. That was a lot of fun. Um, oh, actually, the other mode of transportation I've done is by bus, um, and that was back in high school. We did a 16-hour school bus ride up to Michigan. Oh man! Um, after that, we did coaches, but yeah, that was if you've ever, if you've never driven sixteen hours in a school bus oh, with man. a bunch of middle school and high schoolers, uh, and at least three of the middle schoolers have bladders smaller than the size of peas. That just that's just that just sounds terrible. <laughs> Though it was it was so sounds much better like than we worst. got a coach. It so sounds, much better. It sounds like the worst. Oh, it was it was pretty bad. Like everyone was worst. complaining about it, and yeah. it was like this is what we had to work with. But um, now I've done a bunch of plane travel. Uh, I think the first big one, 2008, we went from Virginia to New York, New York to California, California to Ohio, Ohio back to New York, back to Virginia. Um, that was my first big being on a big plane. Um, and then um, I think the next time I went on a plane was I went down to Haiti, 
and then the next time I went on a plane was when I moved to Washington. Um, and then I've flown back and forth here uh, a couple of times. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've taken a train ride. Yeah. I really want to take a train ride. Because there's you a never lot... rode on a train before? Um, no, not like on a long train ride. Like A lot of the trains that I've been on have been like the, the, the short ones that go from city to city. Like the really short, like one, two hour rides. Oh, okay. Um, but like... The one like the one like big thing about trains that I really like is like you if you get the right Amtrak or the right train just in general you can get some nice long views of the country mm-hmm. and you can just like there's sleeper cars and um, you know it's like there's convenient stops and transfers yes but there's also like with anything there's also cons and I think like one of, probably one of the biggest cons of um, taking a train is the fact that if the track at any point in time is disrupted, your travel is disrupted, and you can't go anywhere until they fix the track. Yeah. And, like, that's also one of the things I like about a car, is if a car, like, you can go pretty much anywhere. You can make as many stops or transfers as you want. Yes. Um, but now one of the big cons is, you're the one paying for gas. Yes. And you're also paying for food and maintenance. You have to deal with traffic, construction, delays, road closures, um, you know, bad weather. Um, All of it in between. You know, there was there was a chance that you know, um, you know, there was a chance that uh, Greg uh, wasn't going to be able to, yeah. to make it for the live one that we had a few weeks ago because of the because of the past because situation. of the past conditions. Right. Yeah, no, and and not that that would have disrupted anything that we were doing. It, it would have slowed it, it down a little we, bit. We would have just done, you know, it via over, like what we normally yeah, do. Yeah, with Skype and stuff like that. But you know, that aside from the point, it's like, but also with the planes. Oh yeah. It's like with there's like a lot of like there's it's fast, it's reliable, um, you know, it's comforting if you're not claustrophobic or aerophobic, you know. Um, but you know the some of the cons of it is it's it's expensive, you know there's some pretty long lines and as Greg and I were discussing off the podcast, you know you have to deal with the TSA. TSA. Yeah, and uh, sorry, but uh, fuck the TSA. <laughs> Probably one of the most corrupt organizations ever to run security. Yeah, I don't, the I don't like them. Um, but they keep us safe. Yeah, in quotation marks they keep us safe. Um, and yeah, it's just and you know with the with the with the car, I don't know. I feel like there's more of a um, independent feeling. Yeah, I think that's also like the way of transportation you learn right off the bat too is the car. So it's just like you feel like this is mine. Like I choose where I want to go. <laughs> you know. So and all you find I I don't know. Like I find it very comforting. You know. Like. Now, as I get older, it's just, like, whenever I travel, it's just, like, sometimes those car rides are, like, the only time that you get to yourself. And I'm like, oh, yeah, put on the podcast, put on, you know, your jams, and just be with yourself and travel and see beautiful sights, you know. Um, I've, like, been living out of my car at a couple moments in my life, and I've also learned how to camp out of my car. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, there you go. Is, Didn't you have a Jeep fun. for a while? I did have a Jeep for a while. Yeah, I had a Jeep rattle. Wrangle. Yeah, dude, the death wobble. <laughs> All right, here. If you don't know what the death wobble is, um, it's just like how the Jeep suspension is. If you hit a pop hole and just like the front two tires will go, you know, uh, up and down, and you just gotta coast, coast it out, and then, and just like, oh, then you're uh, back to normal. Um, I remember Josh and I. Josh needed to uh, get his cell phone from the soto district and i'm like yeah sure man let's go so we're just like driving on the highway and then we hit a pothole right and then the death wobble comes and josh is freaking out (laughs) like to say the least he's holding on for his life he went and grabbed you know, like the safety bar, and like he, I legitimately thought we were gonna crash and die on the way to Soto. And he's like, <gasps> and here I am, just like calm, you know, just like <laughs> I'm looking over, and he's acting like this completely normal. Like, dude, they were gonna fucking die, and he just goes, dude, this is like completely normal. <laughs> this, is, this is normal, man. You know, then we coast out, and then keep on going. I just remember his face. <laughs> 
Because it's just like we're going like 60, 70 miles an hour, and then it's like, pop, 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 it's like, ah, this is going to explode. And here I'm like, yeah. He's like, he's like, yep, this, this is like a completely normal operation, and I'm like freaking out. I'm just like, what is going on? Are we going to crash and die? And it's like, every time. Every time you say, like, the death wobble, I just look back to that moment on the high where I'm just, like, freaking out. I'm just like, that's freaking hilarious. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that, that's the kind of thing that you also have to t- t- tack into with a car. Um, like, so, for instance, um, for when I moved to Washington, I sold my car in order to pay first month's rent. Mm-hmm. And when I moved out of Seattle, I, was, I had the ability to acquire a car. So, like, now I, I'm, like, re learning like driving and stuff like that because you know after three years you you uh get used to not like operating a car so there are certain things when you're operating a car that you feel that you don't feel as a passenger if you're sitting in the back like they're just you can feel like the steering or you can feel like you know how the transmission's going and stuff like that and again with like the death wobble scene like that is like you're you know like you're gonna be okay but like when I'm like first traveling out with like this car, like I had an issue was it a couple weeks ago where I couldn't get the car above forty miles an hour and freaking out, and you know, I was like calling my friend who had pri- previously owned the car. I was like, yeah, you know, this kind of happens and stuff like that. This is what you gotta do. Boom, 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 boom. He's the type of person that um, is very solution forward, and he's just like, oh yeah, you just gotta do this, this, and this. And so it's just a relearning of that. But that's also one thing that you don't have to worry about with like trains and planes, except you know if the brakes are getting changed and you're a dad and you want to go and watch the watch the supervised the brakes oh, being yeah. changed on the on the plane from the terminal. And then it's like you know there there were just certain like delays. I remember one time I think the longest delay I had on a plane. I was we were sitting on the tarmac for like three hours. Oh my god! And I was just like, can we get this freaking thing moving already? They're like, oh, there's like delays and yada yada. I was like, I've been I've been sitting in here for three hours. Can you at least turn on the air conditioning so I'm not sweating through everything? And um, that's when I get claustrophobic is the heat. Oh yeah. Yeah, the heat causes me claustrophobia. But um, you know, one thing I was interested while I was researching this kind of thing, um, I kind of wanted to put some like some some price points out there, um, kind of like do like a comparison with the prices. So um, I did a I did the Los Angeles to New York trip, just a, like okay. a one way kind of way, because I was like, that's a really really classic a, classic trip. That's kind of an average trip that people do if you're flying a lot. So with a car, it it will take you about 41 hours to get from LA to New York, um, about 27, a little under 2,800 miles, and it'll cost you about seven eight hundred dollars in that gas. And how I how I got to that number was I just took the average gas price. And put it to the average gas price, average miles to the gallon, and that's how I got the price. Um, but with the plane, um, and it can and it can range anywhere from between six to ten hours, depending on which airline you take, um, and depending also which time that you time that you travel. So the one that I had for the plane was about six to seven hours, and you go from LAX to JFK. It's about three hundred dollars for economy. And it goes up from eight hundred for the um, was it the premium economy, thirteen hundred up for business, and then about the same for first class. So like if you really want like a first class trip with all the stuff and all the items, you're gonna be paying about thirteen hundred bucks, which is six hundred more and uh, six hundred more than you would be paying for the car in, in gas. And then with um, the train, again, LAX to JFK or uh, there in around with the train stations. If you're taking Amtrak. It's about four sixty for a coach, about four eighty for business, and then uh, it's about two thousand bucks for a, for a room. Um, get and the like, room. Yeah, for a get your room. I was like, you know what? If you're if you're g- really kind of just going on a sightseeing trip from LA to New York City, why not take the coach on the train? Like, yes, it is four days, right? But get the room, man. But you get the room for two thousand bucks. You get the food. You get the you get the room. It's probably like it's private, mm-hmm. and you don't have to worry about driving, or you don't have to worry about you know butt heads on the road. You don't have to worry about construction. The only thing you really have to worry about is if you're making stops, get to the right train on time. Because I believe this particular Amtrak line from L.A. to New York City, 
I think it has about 12 stops and transfers. Whoa. Um, because, uh, yeah, it stops It stops a couple times in Arizona and New Mexico. Um, I think the biggest ride, I think, is from Wyoming to Chicago or one of the Midwest states to Chicago. I think that's the big, that's the big long haul, and then you get Chicago straight to JFK. Um, but you could legitimately do an Amtrak around the country. Mm-hmm. One, you, you'd miss some of the New England stops, but um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. But I think the I think the train ride, I think that would be a really nice classic trip. That would be. Yeah, it's um. I'm thinking about doing a train ride trip this year. Actually, go down over to Whitefish, Montana. Oh, nice. Take the Amtrak, get a private room on there. And Ooh, <laughs> that Cascade trip's gonna be really nice. I was looking at that last year for a trip to Chicago. Mm-hmm. I was looking at the Cascade Mountain, um, the trip, and I was like. Oh, that sounds beautiful. Yeah, I was thinking about doing, the, yeah, to go over to Whitefish Ski Resort because I get a, um, I can get some free tickets over there. So <laughs> it was like, yeah, uh, yeah, might as well, you know, take a train, you know, and see, you know, what it all entails. Yeah. But I think, um, as as far with like traveling stuff like that, I think the, I, I honestly think the number one is. I think the number one recommended is plane, but I think the number one that people really like is car. I think every if you can drive, I this is like my whole mentality. If you can drive there less than uh, twenty four hours, it's not that far away. Yeah, it's not that far away. If you can drive less than twenty four hours, it's not that far away. Because like, I mean, if you think about it, if you think about it, back before there were planes, trains, and and, and automobiles. Yeah, dude, you got if you, you walk got from the here to Yakima. Oh shit, man! If you walk from here to Yakima, that'll take you like two days. Um, it, it, no, man, dude. If, that's if just, there's no roads, it, it takes you a week. No, man. It, I think it was longer. Really? Because yeah, like think about it. you're carrying all your stuff. You're going over the pass. There is no defined roads. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. think about it, like maybe like a week and a half. No, no dude, it's gotta be two longer. Weeks? It might have been like a two week thing. Two weeks trip to from yeah. here to Yakima. Yeah, like if we. If we were just, like, doing, like, the whole Pioneer thing. Carrie. I actually want to look this up on, yeah, on Google like Maps. Google. I, I want to look I want to look like, up. Like, it's two weeks if you have, or not two weeks, but, like, I think it's, like, two days. But, like, if you're. But if you're walking constantly like with constantly, nothing. Constantly with Like, if you did, uh, was it, you know, Yakima from where we are. So, kind of from British perspective, you're looking at Seattle, we're on the other side of the sound. Yeah. That's, that's kind of, we're not in Seattle, we're. We are you would have to go down and around yeah. the sound and then across the path, um, across the pass. Yeah, I think I think it would be like three or four days. Yeah, that would be walking. that would be really interesting. I don't think I'd ever, <laughs> I don't think I'd ever do that just for fun. I think I'd do that if there was like a meaning behind it, like a you meaning. were doing a walk for something. Or, like you know um, that veteran who walked across the the entire United States. To oh, raise yeah. money for, um, like, I guess it was, like, those veteran foundations. So, like, okay, that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, some people do that. That's pretty cool. Or you have those ultra marathon runners that'll yeah. run 100 miles, and you're just like, whoa. So, uh, yeah, walking, it would take you, it says it would take you two days. Two days. Um, but then again, you're that's traveling on the roads. You're, you're traveling on, you know, actual roads. Mm-hmm. Um, if you were just hiking it. Hiking it. It would take you about two weeks. Probably. Yeah. I mean, and I think the other one, too, is, like, you know, one of those, like, long walk kind of things is, uh, you ever thought about hiking the Appalachian Trail? Oh, dude, I hear people do that all the time, or the Pacific Crest Trail, too. Yeah. Yeah, I had a buddy of mine, he, for, uh, the last six months of his senior year, he hiked the Appalachian Trail. Mm-hmm. Um, he went in there with, like, long hair and, like, no beard, and he was, like, I don't know, maybe 250, I want to say. He was mm-hmm. a bigger guy. He was about 17 or 18. He came out of there, and, and he had dropped almost, like, 80 pounds. Whoa. And uh, it was, like, in yeah, he did it. He went from, so he started in Georgia in January mm-hmm. and ended up in Maine in July. Whoa. Um, and I was like, that's that's kind of how you want to do it, or the flip-flop. You start in Maine in July, and you're way to South Georgia for the for the winter. Because, mm-hmm. um, trust me, you don't want to be in Georgia in, in the summer. Uh, it, it'll get to, like, 100 and, like, 15, yeah. 20. Like, it's disgusting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Appalachian Trail that'll take you about six months. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, that's that's an insane that's an insane. Like, if you think about it, like looking back, 
on like before there were trains, planes, and automobiles with all the walking and stuff like that. Like to think of how in shape people were, were, were without that, you know, the luxury lifestyle that we now oh, have. Yeah. I mean, that's like, that's just crazy. Like even, even when we were talking about earlier, like just walking, like when I was living in Seattle, walking everywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's a really good workout. Yes. And especially if I've got music in my ear and I'm walking fast, <laughs> it almost feels like one mile. It, like one mile feels like two miles at the end of it because like I'm walking so fast. And uh, you know, it's. I guess, you know, I guess my big thing is I I really want to do a cross country road trip. Yeah. I want to I want to go from Seattle. I want to hit New York City. I want to go down to Florida. I want to hit San Diego. And I want to come back up. Yeah, that'd be a fun road trip. Yeah, I don't know how long that would be. It'd be a road trip. Three weeks? I don't know. You're the driver. Yeah, yeah, right? I'm the driver? <laughs> probably, think about it. It would probably take me about five days to get from Seattle to, say, New York City. Yeah. It would take me another day, and it'd take me another half a day, day, to get me down to Florida. It'd take me another five days to get to um, to San Diego, and take me another two days to get back. Yeah, it's about mm-hmm. two weeks or so. The Florida trip, like uh, when I was living in Virginia, that was a 14-hour drive to Florida, and then New York's about an eight-hour ahead of that. Mm-hmm. So that's about a day, day and a half if you split it up right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be a pretty cool trip. Is the, I've done. See, have you seen the videos of the people doing road trips from? Um, was it they did one from D.C. to Seattle, but they had a dash cam what? and they time lapsed the entire thing. Whoa. Oh, dude! Even the fuck, even the time lapses are ten hours. Oh the my time gosh. lapse is ten hours. Wow! Because of how long they're traveling, and uh, they 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 stop at a certain points, like crossing into this, crossing into that, and I think they have a map at the lo- lower yeah. k- corner that has like you know where their location going, like on a plane. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of like really cool ways to like travel, yes. but I think I honestly I prefer a car. Car is definitely the funnest. In my opinion. <laughs> It, of travel yeah because like you get to stop and 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 you know take you're pictures. on your own schedule yeah like when i was uh when i when i traveled from uh i when i went to go see uh when i went to go to yakima yeah um i stopped a couple of times to get some pictures of like uh of the different mountains the, the different mountainscapes like it, there was this one i was coming because i I was trying to get it there by a certain time, so I didn't stop on like the way there, but I stopped on the way back. There's this beautiful shot. So you come over, you come over this highway, you come up to a hill about, uh, you just come to the top of the hill and you look down and you just see the freaking valley right in front of you. And I'm like, oh yeah, the valley into Ellensburg. Yeah, the valley into Ellensburg. And, and I was the like, ca- oh. in the entrance to the Cascade Mountains. Yeah, yeah it was the best sick. Views. It was so sick. Like it was. Like, it was probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Like, even going through the pass, like, I was like, look at the pines. Look at the water. Look at, like, the creeks and the rivers and, and how they're all bending and twisting. And one thing I actually kind of like when I saw about the, about the pass, it sort of points it moves with the land. Mm-hmm. Uh, so at some sorts. Because, I don't know, because you, you, you've seen the movie Cars, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, like, they're, like, it moved with the land. It, it, it kind of rose and fell, and then they had the highway just cut right through. Like, in the past, they, they do have – they have cut through, but there are certain points of that past where, where like, you feel like you're moving with yeah, the land. Yeah, moving with the land, and that is such a cool feeling. Oh, yeah. Because you just, like you're, – you're, it's almost like you're floating through nature. I'm one with nature. Yeah, you're one with nature. And I think that's one of the really cool, really cool parts about being in Washington State. Yes. Is, like – there's so much nature that you can explore. Like, I don't know, how long do you think it would do a road trip around Washington? Oh, I've done this before. Um, like, if you want to do a real quick, big road trip, it's like, like if you just do a circle, you're you're not hitting the big p- corners. It's about, I think I drove. It's like twelve hours, which like is in one day, bad. which which is which is nothing. Which is, yeah, it's pretty small to think about it because I started in Yakima, went up to Wenatchee, crossed over to Seattle, went down through White Pass, and then uh, went uh, to the Tri-Cities, and then back up to Yakima. So yeah. that was about 12 hours. Yeah, that's kind of, it's, it's kind of interesting how um, my – my view of the geography of Washington State changed when I was driving. Yeah. Because, like, 
you know, when I was living in Washington State, like, there was, like, you know, people were talking about these things. Like, I have no idea, you know, where they were. Like, I stayed on the I-5 pipeline for a long time because oh, yeah. that's where the buses ran. Mm -hmm. So when I went to Yakima, I was like, whoa, Yakima's way out. I mean, it's a five-hour drive from where we are. Um, and it's like, holy smokes. Like, this is a this is this is like a long this is you know, Yakima's like way out there you know through the past but oh my god it but was it's just not that thing. as far as what people think yeah um and with that being said if you can get there less than twenty four hours it's not that far away <laughs> and with that we're gonna wrap up this episode of the Horseman Podcast we're talking about our hot take on traveling hope you guys enjoyed. As always, this episode comes out on 42 Studios whenever it does come out, so go check it out over there. This has been fun. We'll catch you guys next week. All right, see ya. Have a good one.